Talk, uh, let's talk this Kmart deal. Um, I don't usually hear the word wellness come out of your mouth. Uh, how would you describe what this campaign is about? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> they got it phrased pretty much the way they want to do it. Of course. It's their campaign, right? <laughs> wellness and fitness and all of that. But I just try to, I, I try to encourage women uh, through, through my book and everything of uh, how to get themselves well in their relationship. You know, it's just so many women that don't understand men. I thought that this book would help because I thought that the first thing I would do is just tell them the truth. Right. As much as I could. Now, do I have a second book? Yeah. Do you have a second book up your sleeve? Yeah, because, you know, the thing I've discovered about women is I, once you tell them stuff, they're pretty inquisitive. So they've asked me a lot deeper, richer questions from the book, and so I'm going to go probably a little deeper next time. In, in terms of depth, how would you describe depth? Like, what issues do you feel like you didn't address deep enough? I mean, you know, deep I enough? think um, one of the issues we got to talk about a little bit more is that woman who's uh, handling everything on her own right now. And how does she find the guy that can step in and, and take over that? Or Especially if they're a single mom him? with a job, that oh, type of thing? absolutely. Absolutely. That's a major issue, you know. Uh, what to do with these young boys that they're raising alone, that's a tough issue, you know. You know, um, where do you find the guy? All of that stuff, you know. And there, there's no real answer for that one, you know. You can find a good guy anywhere. Right. But I think the one thing that I, I've learned that I have to share with me is I haven't met a single woman who set out to find a husband and found him. I have not found a single woman who set out to find a husband and found him. It's not something that you're supposed to find? Like, is, is that part of the thing? Is it's not something you're supposed to seek out? I don't have looked for wives and found them. But I have yet to see a woman go out and say, look, I'm going out to the club and I'm going to get me a husband. Why does it not work the other way around? <laughs> uh, because you, you, you can't hunt the hunter. Fair enough. You cannot hunt the hunter. He will turn that around you and you'll be trapped so fast. You know, uh, 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 a hunter can't ever see you as a victim. You know, and, and the moment you come in that mode, they're going to see you as a victim. It's going to be over. You know, it's just not good. There's ways to get what you want, but you cannot hunt the hunter. A lot of guys have read your book, too. Has it been helpful for them as well, you think? Or? I think so. You know, most guys that read it, first they think I'm male bashing, but they find out very quickly that I'm not. They just go, wow, this guy really was trying to help us out. Because I tell women how men really are. Right. Because they just don't know. The first three chapters is just all about how men really, really are. And, and a lot of women never knew that about It's sad it only takes three chapters, but that's probably about right. Really, I could have given it in 13 pages, but the book company had me stretching. <laughs> well, that's the truth. You can explain men in three pages, man. We're, it's, it's sad but true, yes. Yeah. You said the book sold incredible amounts, right? Did you, do you even have a number exactly how many have sold? Like two million. So you said it was like the number three book of the year or something? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, the guy that does those... Um, vampire books, he always sells big, and then I was rolling along killing him, and then Sarah Palin came out, she beat me by like 200 books. <laughs> <laughs> she had even a little bit more press than you did, I think, over she the year. a little bit more press, <laughs> and then, you know, they did some weird stuff, they were selling the book for four and five dollars, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. You didn't need to sell your book at four or five dollars, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> No, I did not. Mine's 1999. 16 is the best price you can get for mine. Oh, is that what Kmart's selling it for right now? That's yeah, the Kmart <laughs> price. <laughs> so I, it's funny. I just I was just watching the Soul Train documentary yesterday. Did you? Um, I was wondering, have you had a chance to see that the uh -huh. VH1 Soul Train? It's just a sort of celebration of Soul Train after yeah. 35 years. But did, what impact does Soul Train have on you? I was kind of curious. I mean, I was growing up as a kid like everybody else every Saturday. I went to see Soul Train because I wanted to see the girls. Mm -hmm. I watched. I didn't watch Soul Train for the musical act. I watched it for the girls coming down the Soul Train line. <laughs> I wanted to be a Soul Train man. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I actually, actually, my room had a sign on the door that said, "Welcome to the Soul Train." I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, I had a beanbag chair and beads and everything. Yeah, I had a lava lamp. Yeah, I was Mr. Soul Train. What was your best dance move down the down the yeah, line? Yeah, the rodeo. I can't do that anymore, but it was a rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get you to demonstrate. No, no, no. No. <laughs> oh no, man. 
you'll never get now now steve learned how not to make a fool of himself <laughs> you might catch me looking foolish but i won't stand up and really like make a fool out of myself that yeah. You've reached that age in your life, you know. A little bit too smart. For but what, what, isn't there a point when you get old enough that it doesn't matter what you do? You're not foolish anymore. You're just old. It doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> you're, you're not at that fool, point. Yeah. If you're an old fool, you pretty much shot your life pretty good. <laughs> I think once you get older, you got to have enough experiences to go. You know what? I shouldn't do that. <laughs> that won't go well. That's why I feel sorry for young guys who get famous early, man, because. They have to make so many mistakes. It's so tough on a young guy to be famous, man. You know, I really feel kind of like the Chris Browns of the world. You know, huge mistakes. You know, Kanye's really a nice guy. Oh. He really is a genuinely nice guy, and he, he has good intentions in his heart sometimes. But when you're young, you just jump right out there and you do something that's just a little bit stupid. <laughs> how about how about Mr. Vic? We don't. Well, I, I loved him, man. I think I think he made a mistake, but I think it was a a mistake that was bred in him from he was a little boy watching older guys in the neighborhood. Right. And that just takes on you just taking on your environment, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, he's he's redeemed himself pretty admirably, man. I'm a really a big Michael Vick fan. Was then and even more mm -hmm. so now. Last question, Family Feud. What's your game plan for doing Family Feud when you start it? I'm gonna take you back to the days when Richard Dawson was doing the show. Which means what exactly? Meaning a little bit of, a little yeah. more flirty, flirty type of thing, or? Well, not flirty, but <laughs> if if you give a stupid answer, I probably shouldn't probably let me hear it. Oh, you're gonna give him a little bit of? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, don't you watch it sometime and a guy says an answer that you know is not on the board, and that's it. Especially after they huddle as a group. Oh, I see. I mean, and it's easy to blank out. I think. Five in... family members get together and then that's the answer you came up with. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> You and Cedric's family, who, who would win, though, if you... Uh, Cedric's family is a really nice family. My family has violent 